Everyone tells you you should invest in real estate. I'm going to show you the five ways you get paid when you actually do. Hey y'all, my name is Keith and I am a mortgage lender in Nashville that is passionate about helping people finance real estate smart. And today I'm actually going to show you a real life example on how you can make money in real estate with a little bonus idea at the end that actually might make you more money than the individual investment itself. Number one is appreciation. This is the thing that I think most people think about when they buy investment real estate, but it's really the cool thing about real estate and it's that you kind of hurry up and wait. Real estate is a get rich slow strategy. If you just look at any period of time in real estate history, over time, real estate goes up in value. And if we look at, let's just say this example here, 20 year appreciation rate, you buy a $600,000 home with a 4% annual appreciation growth. There are some areas, even in this market, where we've seen a seven to 10% appreciation rate year over year right now in 2024. And so I'm just using 4%. You buy a $600,000 home, you wait. And over time, after 20 years, that home goes up to $1.3 million. That's what homes do. They appreciate over time. Here's actually a really interesting graph going back to 1942. There's only about seven times in US history where real estate has not gone up year over year, this graph shows it. Number two, principal reduction. And I think this is the one thing that most people don't think about. And that is over time, the balance of your loan goes down. So when we look at this, you know, you bought a $600,000 home, you put 20% down, you got a $480,000 loan at acquisition. And over time, the tenant paid that principal down. It's almost like a forced 401k account. And so over a 20 year period of time, that loan balance goes down from 480 to 251, increasing your overall net worth based on that principal reduction. Number three is cash flow. Cash flow is simply the difference between the mortgage payment and the rent that you're bringing in. And I might say more so the mortgage payment, the mortgage payment, the property taxes, the homeowner's insurance, and then the property management fees if you're having a property manager do that. Some people when looking at cash flow will actually put a maintenance expense in. There are some assumptions that we're making here as I'm putting these numbers together. I'm just trying to teach you the ways that you make money in real estate. You buy a brand new property, your maintenance may be far less than an older property. So it's really hard to demonstrate for this purposes, but cash flow is truly the difference between the rent and the expenses on a monthly basis on the property. And I really believe that you should always buy investment property on the front end. And what I mean by that is it should cash flow. I don't like speculative purchases on an investment real estate, meaning, hey, it's just going to go up over time. I'm losing money on a monthly basis between the rents and the mortgage payment, but I know it's going to go up in time and I'm going to make money that way. I just, I, I, I caution you in doing that. Try to make money on the front end making sure that the property cash flows. Number four is depreciation, and this is the magic number. Depreciation is a paper loss that the IRS allows you to take to offset the income that you make on the property. Yes, it's a fictitious loss that you are not actually having that allows you to offset the income on the property. And this is one of the main reasons why I do not pay any income tax on the rental properties that I have is the tax structure that we've created and the depreciation within it. I am not a CPA and I cannot give you tax advice. So make sure you consult your CPA on this and your ability to depreciate. But the IRS IRS actually forces you to take a depreciation every year on the investment that you make. So when your income comes in, you have all the expenses, and then there's an additional paper loss depreciation that comes in to offset those expenses. So you're basically making income on the property and then not paying any income tax on it. Things you need to know about depreciation, you do have to recoup or recapture it when you sell the home. There's a lot of other strategies that I've talked about in other videos on how you can exclude that recapture, but depreciation is paper loss that you have to take. It is something you have to pay back if you do realize a gain when selling the home. But just know this, if you look at the depreciation the correct way, you can potentially offset any income that you make on the property and thus not pay income tax on that investment. Rental income inflation. I think this is something that most people don't think about when they invest in real estate is that rents go up over time. Rents inflate just like the property value does. So over time, as you own a rental property, the number that you're getting today is not gonna be the number you're getting in the future because you are going to increase those rents. Now there's a balance in raising rents that I just want to mention for a moment. I see sometimes new investors getting really greedy on rent inflation year over year. So you've got a great tenant that is in your home, paying you rent on time and taking care of your property. Your property probably could get a little bit more rent, but what if you lose this great tenant because you're chasing an extra 50 or hundred dollars a month, and then you've got to go lease that property out and maybe you miss one or two months of rent. It is going to take you years to make up the lost rent in that one or two month period 
of time that the property was vacant by just chasing that 50 to hundred dollars. So there's absolutely a balance that we have to find when we're increasing rents, especially when we have a great tenant, but rents do double every 18 years. So in this example, if you buy a $600,000 home, market rents are roughly $2,800 over a 20 year period of time with a 4% annual inflation on rents, you should be receiving about $6,100 20 years down the road in rent. And that can happen each year or that can be a catch up. So someone might say, hey, Keith, um, okay, you're not gonna raise the rents every year. Well, then how am I actually gonna get there? At some point in time, you're gonna have a new tenant. You're just going to do that. And at that point in time, you'll do a catch up unless you're in certain areas that have rent control, my advice would be don't invest in those areas. Now, remember, there's the bonus that I'm gonna talk about, which is potentially, if done right, a way that you can make more money doing that than the actual investment itself. But what I do wanna do is kind of put this together for you to show you how these five ways could look if you actually invested in the $600,000 piece of real estate. Hey all, my goal with this channel is to teach you how to finance real estate smart. And if that is something that you're interested in, please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you get to see more content like this. So check this out. After 20 years, your home value has gone up to roughly 1.3 million. Again, we're making assumptions here, but it goes up to 1.3 million. Your rental income has gone up to $6,100 and your loan balance is now 251 because you've paid that down. This is like having a million dollar stock portfolio. With a fixed mortgage payment of roughly $2,700, you potentially have monthly cash flow now of $3,400 a month. Imagine if you would have bought five of these. So how do you make money on this? How do you access this capital? How do you use this as an investment to fund your lifestyle? Well, number one is that cash flow mentioned, um, you potentially have $3,400 a month in cash flow on this. If you would have 10 of these, that's like $34,000 in income off this property. The second way without selling the asset and realizing capital gains is called equity stripping. I actually have done a video on this. Comment below if you'd like me to, but equity stripping in this situation would potentially put $734,000 in your pocket tax-free. Here's the deal. Again, Consult your CPA, but the IRS does not define the loan as income. So this property has gone up in value and you have paid the loan balance down. You've got roughly a million dollars in equity in the home. It's worth 1.3 million. The loan balance is around 251,000. You've got like a million dollars in equity that you could potentially access. In a cash out refinance, you can typically access 75% of the value of the property, which would give you about $700,000 you could take out. Now you have to pay a mortgage payment on this. I get it, but remember the rents have gone up to $6,100. So under this example, you could potentially put $700,000 in your pocket tax-free because it's a loan. You don't have to pay income tax on it. And your mortgage payment would be about $55, $5,600. So you actually still would have some cash flow by putting $700,000 in your pocket tax-free. It's genius. All right. Bonus content, taxes. So I talked about depreciation as it relates to taxes, but when I talk about more is the actual tax strategy and tax structure you can put around your investment real estate. Now consult your CPA, but this is one of the beauties of investment real estate. Investment real estate can be kind of that side hustle. That side hustle doesn't get in the way of your main job, but generates a tremendous amount of income. And then you create a tax structure that offsets all that income to a point where it's actually a loss that offsets the income from your main job. That is the beauty of investment real estate. Where I think sometimes people go wrong with their taxes is they try to find things to write off rather than just writing off their lifestyle. And the cool thing with investment real estate is it becomes a lifestyle. You're always looking for the next investment. You're always managing your current investments and you're always traveling and taking trips to find that next deal you're gonna purchase. And so when you're doing those things, you get a write off those things because it all is within the umbrella, the corporate umbrella that you've created that is managing your investment real estate. And today I make almost more money with the write-offs that we're taking to offset the income that I make on my W-2 job than the actual income that the investments are bringing me because of the tax structure we've created around our investment holdings. Now, if this is interesting to you, share this video with your tax professional and I'm curious on their thoughts and how it might relate to you. So creating this video, the five ways you build wealth in real estate, I kept on coming up with new ways or additional ways that you actually build Build wealth to investing in real estate. And one of those ways is what I call building generational wealth. Real estate builds wealth for yourself, but it also is going to build wealth for your family. Now I have not created that video yet, but I will. So if you subscribe to this channel, you'll get notified when that video drops. Until then, check out this next video. I think it's perfect for you.